Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, the big debate continues over how Pennsylvania chooses its electoral votes and how are we going to do legislative and congressional redistricting, and then our popular financial literacy update, all of that and more when Pennsylvania Newsmakers returns. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me as often is the case is Pete DeCourcy. He's the Bureau Chief from Capital Wire, and Laura Olson. She's with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reporters. All, bo both of you are, are reporters. Look, there's a, a huge story that has been brewing now for several weeks. It has to do with how Pensive Changes chooses its electors. Pete, I'll start with you. Out of the clear, the majority leader of the Senate, with no prepping and no background, says, says he wants to change the way Pennsylvania chooses its electors from the winner-take-all. Presidential candidate with the most votes will win all of Pennsylvania's 20 electoral votes, the picking them out of congressional districts, and of course, two will go to the popular vote. Peter, what is that all about? Well, essentially what has happened is Pennsylvania Republicans are tired of, for the last five presidential elections, giving 46 to 49 percent of the vote to their guy and getting nothing. <laughs> yeah, and well, they're not sure yeah. that they're ever going to get point. anything because every four years, Philadelphia voters, particularly black Philadelphia voters and suburban independent women, as you know, and young people vote. Other than that election, they go back to sleep. It's a yeah. Rip Van Winkle thing. Right. So <laughs> go, you can win Pennsylvania as Republican for governor. Right. You can win as a Republican for U.S. Senate. But for now 20 years, you can't right. win Pennsylvania. Since 1988. For president. And so they want to fix it by going to the Maine and Nebraska system, yeah. which allows you, if the voters do it, to split up the vote. Now, how so it would have a huge effect. Mm -hmm. It would change the, 80, the, the 2008 election from 21 to nothing Obama to 11 to 10 Obama. Yeah, and since the, you need 270 to win... But it, but it will not, but the net effect is it, 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 will not have, it would not have affected a single presidential election. Since 1916, N yep. No, well, maybe you'd have to go back to 1876. We can argue about that. But let's talk about... Uh, uh, how, go ahead. I, well, I want to get the question out. You're ready to talk. Go ahead, Well, the, the Democrats were very oh, quick yeah, to say, right. you know what, we really don't like this plan. This has worked pretty well for us go, so yeah, far. Because they've won, maybe? We, we, we really like getting 20 votes, yeah. as they would if they win the state next year, as opposed to 10 or 9 mm -hmm. or some, you know, smaller amount, as Pete pointed out. It would be basically like dividing the state in half in, right. in some sort of way. Uh, formation like that. Right, and well, so and, and, Rendell and, says, you know what, this is going to lose our clout. If yeah. instead well, that's you're, you're, you're talking about 10 on. votes or 9 votes instead of 20 votes, that's, right. that's a lot of... But, well, no, there, there, this begs two questions. A, Hold a, on a minute. You're, you're talking about a net, a net effect, because mm -hmm. if we end up going to this, you can come out of Pennsylvania with a win of 2 votes or mm -hmm. a win of 4 votes, which means that we have, in terms of margin, we become the size of Dakota and Montana, well, it, which don't get the tens that's, of millions of dollars of presidential campaigns that's exactly, we get. That's, that, that, that's my point. Will this be a disincentive for presidential candidates to campaign in Pennsylvania for the voters of our state to, you know, be engaged in the presidential campaign? For the two-thirds of the state where yes. the, which, select, which always selects a member of the same party, yes. Yeah. For the seven or so districts that can flip, it'll be very different. I wrote it this morning, I wrote, I'm sorry, last week, about um, the Nebraska um, second district in Omaha, which has a congressman by the name of Lee Terry. And Lee Terry always had nice, safe re-election, 64, 61. Then Obama realizes, hey, because we Nebraska has this, split, has this one... We can win Omaha. So he goes, Obama goes and dumps a huge amount of money, and Terry goes from 61 and 64 percent to yeah. 52 percent. Let me, let me, fo and, and go, now, let me the, follow up with this. The, the marginal competitive congressional districts in Pennsylvania are currently held by Republicans, not by Democrats. Does that mean now that the Democrats dump all this money into these marginal districts and put 
the Pennsylvania Republicans even more at risk? Is that a concern? Well, and that's where the other pushback comes from. <laughs> you don't often see uh, Jim Gerlach and gov former Governor Ed Rendell on the same side of something. <laughs> but it, that's the concern for these uh, suburban Republicans. And Jim Gerlach that... represents the 6th Congressional District, Chester, Chester County, County exactly. uh, some of Berks County, some of uh, Montgomery County. Go ahead. And so if there are suddenly this influx of Democratic dollars into the swing districts, they're worried that down the ballot is where we actually yep, that, see the impact in the congressional races and then in the local All right, we're going to run to well. a break. I have a bunch of more questions here before we get the uh, redistricting. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Good job. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by ReconnectPA.org, supporting a comprehensive transportation funding solution. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, hi welcome back to the program. Well, we're, st we're on this whole business of changing the, uh, the way Pennsylvania chooses its electoral votes. It's, very, it's complicated and it's controversial. <laughs> Peter. Laura brings up Jim Gerlach. Could we not add this 7th Congressional District, Pat Me, and the 8th Congressional District, Fitzpatrick, Mike Fitz, could we not add Charlie Dent, uh, Charlie Dent up in, in the Lehigh, Lehigh Valley, Valley and, and don't forget Mike and, Kelly out in Erie. Uh, probably no, a little no, more safer, no, no, no. but Lou, go look, ahead. Look at Obama McCain in, in that district. It was a couple of hundred votes, Obama McCain in that district. A couple get, of hundred I, votes, well, and Kathy Dalkemper won all right, that well, year. What we're doing here is going after other competitive congressional districts that both of you think the Democrats would pump. Why bother with getting the turnout up as a whole, right? Well, that 10 to $20 million that each party spends on the presidential race, and I'm, I'm saying in the broadest sense, I get it. all the allied groups and stuff, that would instead go largely to five districts. Now, yeah. those districts also have a number of the competitive races for right. the lower thing, but not all of them. But it also, as, as and both the parties of, are, are very... As, as the, both of you have pointed out, and Laura mentioned this a moment ago, this could have, once you get that kind of money and that energy, this could have down ballot. This could affect legislative races as well. No, yes? In 2008, the best line I heard was Mark Holman, the former aide to Governor Ridge, who said, all politics is now national. Oh, this will oh, further like that. nationalize that politics. That way. You, this will further agree? nationalize it. We're going to end up in a British system yeah, where we're going to have national referendums in congressional districts. You agree? Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's turn in a few minutes that we have left. Let's, anything else on this that you have to say? All right. Down the road, this isn't a done, even though the Republicans control the legislature, they have the governorship. Down the road, Yes or no? Does this pass? Oh, I really put you on the spot. <laughs> you can beg off if you want. I, it's an unfair question. I don't know. I don't you want don't to place know. a bet at you this point. You don't want to place it. A couple of days left to see. The <laughs> state party and the con con congressmen from the Republicans are pushing are back hard. Are weighing in. Are weighing in. But mm -hmm. Corbett has two levers. He can say to the state party, I will raise you what you're not getting from national. Yep. And he can say to the congressman, hey, I'm redrawing your districts right now. And he's going I to protect you. Or if you make too much noise, he isn't. Oh, that sounds crazy. I mean, he's going to, he, on this he's, issue, they're going to put their congressional delegation no, at risk? No, but, but, but every congressman has a state senator or somebody else or some rich guy. Who and they wants can, to replace them. And they can draw the <laughs> district so it helps. Okay. Top Laura, replacement you've been covering that, this that redistricting the thing. Go ahead. That we heard um, Senator Jay Costa, the minority leader in the Senate, was saying, "You know what? This is going to turn redistricting into an even more gerrymandered process because all of a sudden you're just going to be drawing the lines so that congressional, the, so that the, uh, the presidential CDs, folks the congressional will, districts. Will win, so. so, in other words, they now draw the congressional the districts states. in order to win the electoral to vote. To, in order to, to win the one electoral vote, as opposed to win re-election or are, no, they, no, no. are they similar? No, they're, they're basically similar, but, but what they can do is let's say that you've got a state senator who the congressman hates, and let's say the state senator's district is only half in the congressional district. Oh, you put you them can all take, in. Yeah. You can take half of the base of the congressman out and still keep it very Republican, look, but look, not keep it look, this, Republican this, Congressman hold, X. Hold, hold on a second. Oh. Hold, hold on a second, Laura. You know the, you know the history of the state. This makes it's all personal. no sense, and here's why. 
it's not going to affect the presidential election. It is not going to affect who the president of the United States is. It might. No way, Peter. I'll bet you a, a meal on this. But here's the point. It Look, might. No. There are maps not, where it does. No, no, no. It's not going to, that's not true. But there bigger, are maps that big, there bigger, are bigger point, bigger Look point. Look at Nate Silver. They're going to do this, they're going to do this, get into this controversy for such little consequence in my judgment. And it, it, it's distracting kind of from the, the larger thing that they still do have to do. They do have to redraw, redraw the, lines. the lines. And that's really uh, the, the bigger argument that we have to figure out so they're going to build internal moment. competition within their, no, hold on, no, let me think, within their own. No, they could to punish noisy people. If oh, people are quiet. Yeah, but then they lose the seat. Then, no, not if you keep it Republican, but a different um, Republican. I, I guess. But, I see but, your but point. I, but you've, you're making the real point here, which is there is starting to be a stink about this. If the stink continues, then it may not be worth doing. And that is part of what Governor Corbett has to consider. But as we know, Governor Corbett tends not to change his mind. <laughs> I'm glad you said that and I didn't say that. All right, at any rate, we're about out of time. But look, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get the last word on this. I normally don't. I give you. I just think the, the unanticipated consequences of this greatly outweigh the advantages of a few electoral votes in a situation in which it is not likely to have an effect. You will have to get a presidential election so close that five or six electoral votes will make a difference. Bush-Gore 2000. Ten. It, hold on a minute. If Pennsylvania had split its electoral vote, it would have only helped Bush, who won by five electoral votes. It would have given ten more. I get the last word. I normally don't. I usually give it to the reporters. All right, our popular financial literacy update is next. Uh, we'll see you around the bend. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back. Well, we're doing our popular financial literacy update with Greg Smith. He's the CEO of PSECU and Jim McCormick. He's the CEO of PA Credit Union Association. Both have been on the show. All right, before we get into this uh, Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, long title, I, I want to go, uh, what are we doing with credit card debt? I see this report that we have this staggering $18.4 billion credit card debt in the second quarter of this year. What's that about? Well, Terry, I, I went back and um, looked at the, um, the the data year over year, and and all that we have in the second quarter, the $18 billion increase, that follows a uh, $33 billion decline in credit card balances in the first quarter. Okay. So on net, actually, consumers are, are still about $15 billion paid down, paid down on their balances. And what you saw in the first quarter is, is again, a, a seasonal thing. Um, consumers run debt up during the holidays and, and then off. pay down yeah. in, in the sort first quarter. Sense. You've got tax refunds coming back and things like that. And we always know what to do with those tax exactly. refunds, right? We've got exactly. to pay off the yeah. credit card charges for yeah. the holiday yeah. season yeah. and other things. All right, Jim, uh, let, let's talk about this whole business. You know, this, we've had all this concern about Wall Street and what happened leading up to the recession and the degree to which they participated, particularly in a lot of the of the bad, you know, mortgages on uh, home, home, home loans, maybe some business loans, home loans probably mostly. What is the purpose of this reform, the Consumer Protection Act, which President Obama signed into law in 2010? Well, it's supposedly to protect consumers, but uh, most of the impact were on uh, banks and the few credit unions, very mm -hmm. few that are over $10 billion in assets. But there's been some real downside to it. Uh, one, uh, you've mentioned uh, mortgage lending. The uh, underwriting guidelines put on by the regulators have become far too strict. 
In the past, if you had a pulse, you could get a mortgage loan. Now you'd have to be an Olympic athlete, <laughs> almost, you know. So what you're saying is they need to be somewhere in the middle between making, giving a loan so, to anyone and, and <laughs> you both of you were nodding. Go ahead. Reasonable, no. right. And the uh, other thing that uh, did come up that credit unions particularly were involved with was the uh, Durban Amendment that had yeah. to do with the uh, debit card fees. And uh, most of the institutions uh, throughout the country will not be immediately impacted, but the consumers, by and large, in the long term will be. And uh, you're going to see the end, is particularly with large banks, large financial institutions, not credit unions, mm -hmm. really the end of free checking. But uh, credit the, end unions, of the end of free checking? The end of free checking. But credit unions, for example, uh, Greg, uh, uh, we came out pretty good, uh, credit unions, uh, with the Federal Reserve Amendment. What are you guys doing, Greg? Well, the, the, the Durban Amendment specifically exempts institutions. He's a, Senate, he's a senator, senator from Illinois. Uh, a Democratic senator from Illinois, exactly. by the way. Go ahead. Right. Get that out. Um, senator Durban's amendment to the Dodd-Frank bill um, actually exempts institutions that are, have assets under $10 billion. Right. And, and that covers all but three credit unions nationally. PSECU, for example, is only just a little under $4 billion. So we're, we're not impacted by right. that. That's given us an opportunity to actually um, extend services in some areas. Um, what we read is the large banks, are, as, as Jim indicates, are, are terminating their, their free checking programs, modifying rewards on, on debit cards, right. things like that. Is this um, all costing the consumer more? Is well, that, exactly. That, is and, that and Terry, you know, the, the thing that's a little odd about the legislation is debit cards generated about $15 billion a year in revenue for the banking industry. The idea that somehow banks are going to just walk away from that and not find a way to replace yeah. that so is, your is just point, silly. Yeah, we're going to run to a break, but your point is that by but some of these regulations, while they look like they're going to save consumers, yeah. are just going to lead to charges in other areas Bank, of financial are, transactions. Yeah. Am I right about banks that? Banks are already raising monthly fees on checking to like $10 yes. a, right. a month. Things when like we come that. back, I want to ask Jim about uh, deposit insurance. That's something that we all got a little nervous about, you know, given some, given some of the difficulties that financial institutions are having. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, welcome back. I'm uh, chatting with Greg Smith and Jim McCormick. They're uh, both uh, with credit unions. One heads PSECU and one is chair head of the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Uh, we do this financial literacy update once a month. We hope that uh, you find it valuable. You know, leading up, or I should say, after the recession hit, a lot of folks got nervous about, you know, financial institutions and what was going to, have to, going to happen to their money. We I think the original deal was $100,000 that if you had a money in an account in a financial institution, it was protected. What, um, what, what does this uh, Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act deal the, with that? One of the few positive things that came out of this uh, really for consumers was increasing deposit insurance for both banks and credit unions right. to $250,000 per account. So I think that was uh, very positive and uh, You've seen a lot of uh, money coming into the credit union and banking industry right now. Right. Now, let, let me ask you this, so just so for our uh, viewers out there. So if I have an account in my name, that's 250000 If my wife has an account in her name, that's 250000 But if we have it like, you know, Terry and Mary Beth Madonna, one account, that's 250000 and then You all got that. You want yeah. that protection. You better separate it. Right. Uh, Am I right about that? Yeah, and if I had your money, I'd be worried oh, about yeah, that, well, too. Oh, yeah, well, if I had my money, yes. yeah, well, okay. Terry, you can structure it, actually, so go that you, you can extend the coverage. Um, and if you go to, like, the NCUA, which is the credit union regulator's website, you can find ways to, to actually extend that, that insurance coverage over a million dollars, depending oh, really? upon the number. See, of, we always learn something. That's why we yeah. have these guys on this yeah. program. We yeah. learn something yeah. every, every time they're on. All right, one of the things I, you know, increasingly there are fees that we have to pay 
you know, and I don't know, I don't know if they're going up. I don't do a lot of this because I don't do m much of the financial business in my household. But you put a credit card in, you, you know, you're not in your bank or your credit card company, you know, association. You go, uh oh, two fifty or. What 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 what's go, what's the well, late, what's going on in that area? Well, again, um, as a result of the Durban Amendment and and the loss of revenue that the large banks are going to see, we're we're finding that many of those large banks are um, increasing the fees to consumers. Right. Great thing about many credit unions and PSCU specifically is that we're we're going the opposite direction. Um, we just announced our, our board approved um, the increase of what we call our ATM surcharge rebate program. Previously, we, we would give members up to $4 a month in surcharges back. If, in other words, if they used somebody else's ATM and incurred a surcharge, at the end of the month, we'd look back and, and those surcharges, we'd, we'd recover up to $4. We're increasing that to $8 per month for, for members, but then for members who have direct deposit with us or a Social Security mm -hmm. uh, payment that comes in monthly, yeah. we're going to $20 a month on those okay. members. That's okay. up to $240 a year that we're giving back, back. to members. Okay. That's something the banks aren't look, doing. Look, one of the yeah. things that you've done over the years when you've been on this program, Jim, is that we've talked about this, and that's the, the, the essential purpose of making sure that you read this material that we get from financial institutions that may be, you know, single space and hard to read, but all these changes in terms, I mean, this is really hard for consumers. I mean, I don't do a good job of that. I know I... Uh, oh, it's go, very difficult, so, Terry. But, so you're... Uh, go, go ahead. Give us your statement. You, oh, you've, no. talked, you've done this before. Oh, you, you do have to read the fine print. And uh, for many uh, consumers who don't read the fine print, it's good to know that credit unions are consumer-driven and owned. Mm -hmm. They're owned by uh, the members. So if you belong to a credit union, you own it. So they do have your best interest at heart. But it's important, uh, be it with credit or debit, uh, uh, understand the fine print and read it. Right. All right, what other... Uh, look, looking ahead now, as we look ahead in this economy, it doesn't look like we're getting out of this recession any anytime soon. We got about a minute left. What are what do you see happening with home mortgages? With you know, the, are, are people refinancing because of the interest rates? This is a you know important topic. I think we in in August, just this last month, we had our record month for um, mortgage financing. Most of it, Terry was Refinance? was refinancing. Yeah. Not a lot of new purchase activity, but I, I think we did something like nearly 600 mortgages right. in, in the month. And if you were to say, to some, if some, I were to ask you, we've got about 30 seconds left, what difference, in, interest rate differential should you begin to look at? It, it 1%, one Generally, and a half, Generally, because of the fees involved in a refinance, you want to get at least a quarter point. A quarter reduction. point? Quarter pointed. Yeah. All right, well, look, as always, thanks for a great update. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, uh, stay well.